Hey guys, I've owned the Nova Kayak for about a year and a half now and in that time I've uh, come up with a couple of tricks to make it a little bit more durable uh, when out in the water. And uh, specifically on the kayak, one of the things that I've made quite a few changes to to make it a lot more stronger and reliable is the pedals. And today I'm going to be sharing some of those things with you. Let's check them out. So one of the things that annoys me quite a bit when I'm out in the water, especially with these pedals, is that after a while salt builds up uh, inside the, the bolts where the pedals are attached to. And when that happens, the pedals get stuck. And uh, one of the things that, that, <laughs> that annoys me quite a bit is that when I'm out in the water, a pedal might be sitting like this. And if I want to start pedaling, I need to first use my foot to try and adjust the pedal to get it in the right position so I can get my foot into the pedal before I can start paddling. Um, what I did was, is just to make it a bit easier, is I actually inserted a little four ounce sinker at the bottom of the pedal and I just used some cable ties to tie it down. And what that does is, is it keeps returning the pedal to a ready to pedal position. So I'll show you from the front. So not the most amazing trick, but uh, definitely helps when you're out in the water and helps you get up and going a lot quicker, especially when you're moving close to some uh, rock formations or if you're getting into some shallow water and you want to get out of there pretty quickly, it's good to be able to get your foot in the pedals and to start going straight away. Now as with any other type of mechanical device, right, you get wear and tear. And the more you apply pressure and the more movement it is, things start wearing away and things start breaking. So in the beginning when I first got the pedal, um, it had a couple of different little parts in it when you assembled it and uh, for those of you that, that use these Nova kayaks or use these similar pedals you'll know what I'm talking about and one of those things specifically is <clears throat> where the actual pedal meets the main unit so when the pedal arrives it has a little spring clip that uh, you use to adjust the pedals between different settings for your for your feet so I don't know if you guys can see that, but you can see there's some numbers through the middle there, and this pedal can actually be adjusted up and down um, to four different lengths. Now, I don't know about you guys, but no one else really uses my kayak, so um, I never ever change these adjustments. I have it set on a specific number, three for myself, and it always stays there. The one thing is though, is that that little spring clip that you insert inside there is not very tight and it's a little bit loose and what I found was is that after some time it actually started wearing away the little plastic holes so if you look closer these little holes where the plastic clip moves uh, actually springs into from the other side what it does well is is that it actually starts wearing away at the side and starts weakening this little plastic unit so to get around that and make it more sturdy what I've done is I've actually purchased some stainless steel bolts and I've actually bolted it into position on each side and the reason for doing this is it creates a lot, a much more secure connection between the shaft of the pedal and the actual unit itself and a lot less movement within these little holes. Since I've done that, it's been a lot more stable. There's no more uh, movement between these holes and it's not wearing away as quickly. Another thing I noticed with the pedals is the main bolts that actually secures the shaft of the pedal onto the main unit. So when the pedal arrives, these uh, shafts on the pedals, which actually are inserted into the unit itself, these shafts are loose when you first get the pedal. So what I found was is that there's a single bolt that holds this shaft in place over here. And with, with the applied pressure that you're putting onto the pedals and with the spring clip, I found that as the spring clip started loosening, it was actually loosening this bolt as well and damaging the plastic thread inside. So what I did to get around that, and what I would highly recommend is, is to take the bolt out, insert some silicon, uh, some, some, marine, some marine silicon, and then reinsert the bolt. This will keep the bolt in place, and it will also prevent it from unscrewing or from damaging the plastic thread inside the pedal. 
Looking at the front of the pedal, you'll see that I have replaced the chain that was mounted to the front of this little round pulley in front which creates an uh, additional support for the movement of the pedals. I've replaced it with some shock cord. And the reason why I did that is because this, this cable that comes around the top here doesn't really, um, other than providing some support, it doesn't really make a difference. If it does come off or break, you can still pedal um, and it's, uh, you know you can still pedal while you're out in the water it's not going to make much difference but I found that this cable um, it becomes quite a pain to put to take on and off especially when one of the chains break while you're out in the water so what I did was is I took off this chain over the round pulley the wheel and I replaced it with a piece of shock cord five millimeters thick and I, to secure it on the other side I simply just tied a knot and I've done the same on the other side as well. And I found this is much easier if you pull the shock cord quite tight. It is it's secure. It holds us in place. And the added bonus or advantage is, is that um, if you do have to replace one of these main cables, uh, which often break, it's much easier to remove the shock cord off the wheel, replace your cables, and then just put the shock cord back again. Way easier than having to replace a similar cable that uses nuts on each side. Um, I did this probably almost a year ago. It is still the same piece of shock cord. It hasn't broken. Um, it hasn't damaged or worn. And I find that to be a lot more durable and last a lot longer than the original cable that comes with it. Another thing that I've done um, on the, the flaps of the pedal, which is these flaps of the bottom part, is at the, at the rear end of the flap, there's another little quick release spring uh, with, with a little uh, it's almost like one of those little circular spring clips that fits you here to keep the pedal in. I um, also found that was quite weak and um, a bit of a mission to, to take off and put back on when you wanted to replace your flaps on the pedal. So what I did was, is I also replaced that with a little bolt. Although that doesn't seem 100% necessary, I have actually found it to be a lot easier than keeping that little spring in there and I find that it keeps my flat, flap a lot more secure on the pedal um, and it's been a lot more reliable since I've done that. Cool, so replacing the chains. Now, <clears throat> I've had these chains break on me quite a, off, uh, quite a couple of times and I've, I've, actually, um, I've actually ordered spares twice in the last two years. And not necessarily because of the quality of the chains on the pedals. I think the quality of the chains is good. I think that was a fault on my side. And the reason for that is it's because I've over tightened these chains. Now here's a little tip, right? When you, if you still have the original cables on your pedal, I highly recommend that you make sure that the cables are really loose. When I say really loose, you'll see I've got a lot of play in my cables, like a lot of play. And, um, the reason for that is, is that if you over tighten the cables, you're going to apply too much pressure to them or too much tension onto the cables when you're pedaling and they have a higher chance of snapping. So check your cables and make sure that they are nice and loose and that there's not a lot of tension so that they've got some play in it. Since I've done that, the last time I replaced my cables was probably three, four months ago and I've been out many, many times since then and it's been a lot more reliable. Now with some of the parts on the pedal, some of the, or well, one of the very common places where this thing breaks is on this shaft. And this is the shaft that the actual pedal, the, the, the flap of the pedal fits over. Now I've, I've probably replaced about four of these in the last year. And I can never understand why they break because this is a pretty solid piece of steel that's on the pedal. And it always seems to break on top there where it inserts, where it enters into this little uh, plastic mold on top. For a while I thought it was uh, related to maybe the construction of, of this piece. Um, uh, you know, I actually at, at first I thought it was maybe just uh, poor quality. But later what I found is that it had nothing to do with the quality of this unit, but actually two things. One, um, if you're in shallow water, absolutely take your pedal out and store it on top of your kayak. And the reason, for I'm, the reason why I'm saying that, with the weight of the kayak and the pedal in the boat, if you apply any pressure to this rod, it is going to weaken it on top here. And that is one of the reasons why it will break. And another reason is storage. When you store your, pe your pedal, never lie it on its side. 
lying in on its side will place its weight specifically on that point. As an example, storing it like this, you'll see there's pressure being applied. The bottom of the pedal is on the is on the table here, and you'll see that it's 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 leaning, or this part of the pedal here on that unit with the, of the rod has actually got pressure on it. So never store your pedal like this. If you're going to store your pedal, always store it upright like this. That way it's leaning on the bottom of the unit and there's not a whole heap of pressure anywhere specifically on the rod. Or if you need to store it on your side, make sure that you've got a life jacket or something underneath the flaps to keep the flaps up and the weight on top of the pedal itself like that. As an example, I'm just going to put it here on top of my bench vise. So if you just put it like that, you'll see most of the weight is now leaning on the plastic unit and the remainder of the weight is on this unit. There's no weight directly on the rods that are used to support the flaps. Very important guys, if you do that, you're, you will have a lot less uh, snaps or a lot less breakages on these rods where the uh, pedals fit onto. Okay, then the last thing I wanted to mention is your spares. Now for some reason, and uh, I have no idea why, when I order spares, uh, especially for my chains that break, when, when they arrive, well, especially the first time they arrived, for some reason they're shorter than the original cables that came on the pedal. Um, so if any of you that have replaced these before, you, you'll, I'm pretty sure you've faced a similar frustration. And uh, I don't know why, but it's just like that. And uh, if you've got a mate or, or a bud, you know, with you helping out to hold it and install it, you can get them on. The only problem is by the time you actually get the nuts on, um, they're pretty tight, right? And because you've got such a little bit of thread to play with, when you're installing these things, you have no choice but to tighten them up quite a bit. And uh, that's a real pain in the ass. So what I did was, and it's, it's you know, it's, it's a bit of a mission, but let me tell you, if you just do this once, and um, your chain is gonna last you a lot longer. You know, if, if, you, if you do this little trick that I'm about to show you, then um, the chain will last a lot longer and uh, you'll have enough play on the cable as well so it won't snap as easily and that pedal is going to be able, going to be used for a lot of months without anything breaking so what you need to do is you need to put an extra link in this chain and it's a lot easier than it sounds all you do is there's a little clip on the top and this little clip can easily be removed using a screwdriver you just knock that little clip off there once that clip comes off you've got a pin on the other side that you just push off and once that pin is out you then just remove the following two pins and you can easily insert another chain link i'm not going to show you guys how to do that because it is really easy to do it it's just a bit of a mission and putting it back together is, is pretty easy as well just remember if you've never cha changed a, a link on a chain before i highly suggest that you look it up on youtube because uh, what you don't want to do is you don't want to knock that pin all the way out, right? So you, you just want to knock it out enough so that you can get the link out in the middle. Once the link is out, you put the new link in, knock the pins in, and your chain is going to be a bit longer. And what I found is with that extra link in the chain, I get quite a bit of thread exposed on each side of the pedal, which allows me to put the nuts on at a safe distance without the nuts coming off um, and making it a lot more reliable out in the water. So anyway guys, that's it from me. I just wanted to share a couple of things that I've learned over the last uh, couple of months with regards to making my pedal a little bit more reliable out in the water. I hope it's helpful for you guys. And um, please, if you have any questions, uh, you know, or, or uh, anything else you want to know, feel free to drop me a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon. Cheers.